So now we've gone through all these settings. Up here we have a whole bunch of other settings. So there's the color sampler. This is if you just wanted to you know, sample one of the colors and then paint with it somewhere else. Next we have the crop tool if you wanted to crop a different uh, size or composition in your image. Now if you click it you'll notice that there's actually a lot more that the camera captured. This is the full size of the uh, GH5 sensor, but it auto cropped to about there. So I kind of like bringing the image down just a bit, making it a little more widescreen. But if you're going to go to Instagram, then you might want to do more of a uh, more vertical image. Then in that case, you know, you can post something more like that. Okay, let's go back to the zoom in tool. If your image was a little crooked, then you could click this and it would straighten out the image. Next we have the transform tool. If you want to distort your image and let's say, for example, go from here to here down the road, then you could go to the sides here, you'll get more options and you can bring the image and warp it way over there. So there's definitely a lot of cool effects you could do, or you could do the horizontal. You can rotate along those points. So there's quite a lot of options with those. Let's clear the guides there to reset it. Next we have the spot removal. So essentially you can adjust the size here and the idea here is you click a spot and then it picks another area and it'll paste it there. Now after you click the spot you'd like to fix, you can drag this around and then it'll copy and paste whatever is there. Okay, let's go down here and clear all. Next we have the red eye removal. If you're shooting a portrait, next you could use the red eye removal if you're getting red to show up in their eyes. Next we have the adjustment brush, which is one of my favorite tools to use. You can see it has a whole bunch of options here in the adjustment brush panel section. So you go down and size the brush to what you want, so we'll make it a little smaller. And then what you do is you paint along the area that you want to affect. So let's turn on the mask and you'll see the area that we're painting. And this is just the mask you're painting, essentially you're selecting the area that you want to affect. So now that we have the area properly uh, painted on, let's turn off the mask. And then over here we can start adjusting the settings and it'll only affect the masked area. So you can get some really cool results with this. I find this is essentially the focal point, so I think boosting up the brightness or exposure in that area will make it look better. We can also take a step further and really play a lot with the uh, highlights and shadows as well as the clarity in this one as well. And because we've adjusted a lot more of the settings in the adjustment brush, let's bring up the noise reduction so you get the idea of how to play with that. Next we have a gradient filter. Essentially what you do is, this would be a great way to adjust just the sky. And again, you'll have the same type of options. You can play around with just the color of the sky. But the difference here is because it's a gradient filter, it's making the changes as a gradient. So it starts with full and then by the bottom it's nothing. So it, there's a nice transition or gradient into the image. You can get an example of that by bumping this up. Do you see how the top is uh, being affected quite a, quite a bit and then the bottom it, not so much? That's because it's a gradient filter. Okay, so for us I think I'm just going to leave it as it was. So I'm going to clear all. And then I'm going to go to the lines up here and go to reset. And then those will bring them all to zero. Next we have a radial filter. So with this one, for example, we can select just there. And then again, this is more or less a mask and you can see what it's doing. If you wanted it reversed, you can click on inside instead. So this would be a cool way to 
add some sort of dreamlike element in your image. Okay, let's go to clear all and then reset. And I think that's everything for the photo. Now again, that you can see there is some grain up here, but once we export, because we do have this luminance uh, noise reduction way up, it will be affected once it exports. So now just before we export, I'll show you the difference between this and the original unedited raw image. So on your keyboard, if you hit P, you can cycle between um, the unedited and this newly edited. So you can see how much detail we've brought back into the image. This came from not much information, very dark, underexposed, to very bright and natural, to very, very bright, and it looks like an HDR image, you know, high dynamic range image, and uh, lots of great colors, lots of information, and this looks like a lively night scene.